Hello everybody, True Seeker here. Um, this is not a new video. This is a video that came out within the first year of the Vegas shooting in the first few months, I believe. It's been all but scrubbed off the internet and a lot of people in my live chats bring it up and ask about it. And I also have people that uh, private message me asking if I know where it is. And I had a copy of it, and since it's been brought up, I thought it might be a good idea to post it on YouTube again. Uh, just to let everybody know, I did not do forensic analysis on the gunshots. I am not putting my stamp of approval on this. I just think it's important that all videos pertaining to the Las Vegas shooting that people ask about be archived for people that are looking for them if they want to critique it. This video, when it was floating around on YouTube, a lot of other YouTube channels and analyzed this video and disagreed with it. But there were also a lot of survivors that I've talked to that liked this and thought what he was saying made sense. So you can decide for yourself but I did think it was important to archive this so people could find it if they were looking for it. So now I will play it. All right, welcome to Forensic Acoustic Analysis of the Las Vegas Shooting. My name is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. I am, of course, the Lab Science Director of CWC Labs, as well as an avid long-range target shooter. And so I have kind of a unique position to bring you this analysis. Now, for those of you who are watching from law enforcement or the FBI, I'm going to give you the location of the second shooter. And if you're like, whoa, what second shooter? Just, just hold on. I'll walk you through it, okay? It's very simple. So this is forensic acoustic analysis. This is all based on downloaded video files from YouTube, extracting acoustic information, and then analyzing that to pull out signal from the noise. And this is what I do in my laboratory, CWC labs, all the time. We use mass spec instrumentation. We're doing, you know, isotopic spread ratio analysis. We're doing organic chemistry. We're doing ICPMS, all kinds of analysis to pull signals out of noise. So this is the kind of thing I do every day. It just so happens now, it's, it's a shooting situation. Maybe I can help out law enforcement here. I've been critical of the FBI and their lack of transparency about their investigation, but when they said they wanted help from the public, I decided to go ahead and shoot this video to, you know, help them out. Maybe they haven't done this analysis yet. So here we go. Let's jump right into it. Uh, first of all, let's, let's cover some basic math here. The speed of sound at 20% uh, humidity in Las Vegas temperatures is about 345 meters per second. I'm going to use the metric system here for, for a lot of this, for you know, all the obvious reasons. Uh, the speed of a 55 grain 223 Remington round leaving the barrel rifle is approximately 975 meters per second initial velocity. Now, of course, those of us who are long range shooters, we know that velocity drops off very, very quickly, according to a chart kind of like this velocity versus distance. So the farther the bullet flies, it loses velocity according to its ballistics coefficient or BC values. Now, this is important to note. We're going to, this is going to make a lot of sense. Just hang in there. Bullets arrive first on the scene. If you're standing at ground zero, the bullets arrive and hit the ground before the sound arrives of the bullets being fired from the rifles. Why is that important to understand? Because in our analysis of the audio files, and this is like an audio waveform right here, in our analysis, we have to understand that the bullets are hitting first and then the, the rifle report is happening after that. This is crucial to understand. The bullets, remember, are traveling at 975 meters per second. The speed of sound is only 345 meters per second. So the bullets are traveling about three times the speed of sound when they leave the rifle barrel. And at these distances that we're talking about, which is typically you know, less than 600 yards, I'll use a non-metric unit for that, the, the bullets remain supersonic. So they don't pass the transonic barrier and become subsonic velocity. So they never get slower than the speed of sound. Now, flight time is very, very important to understand here. Bullet flight time is how long the bullet takes to arrive at a certain distance. Now, because of the velocity of the bullet is dropping, uh, according to a, a quadratic equation, the flight time is not a linear function, so you have to have a ballistics chart. I got mine from gundata.org. 
So the flight time to 400 yards, or roughly 366 meters, is 0.528 seconds for a 223 55-grain round uh, fired from a 16.5-inch barrel. Now, that's about half a second, right? 0.528 seconds, we can agree that's about half a second. Now let me ask you this question, a little homework for you. How long does it take the sound of the rifle shooting to travel that same distance, 366 meters? How long does that take? Well, you know here that the speed of sound is 345 meters per second. So you can instantly tell it's gonna take more than one second for the sound of the rifle to arrive at the scene where the bullet actually struck the ground. In other words, the bullet strikes in half a second, but the sound arrives another half second later or thereabouts. So there's a gap. There's a difference between the time that the bullet strikes the ground versus the time that the report sound from the rifle reaches that same location. Again, see in blue here, bullets arrive first. This is crucial to our investigation. This is the forensic acoustic analysis that will give us the range of the shooter, as I'll explain. So keep following along here, please. Now, I want you to notice these peaks here. See these five peaks? These are the sound waveforms that represent the sounds of bullets striking the pavement. And these are high frequency sounds. If you listen to all the audio recordings, you'll, you'll see that these sound high frequency. They have a lot of high frequency sound waves in them. These, on the other hand, these are the sound waves of the reports from the rifle in the distance arriving after the bullets have arrived. These reports have a lower frequency sound. That's what these notes are about. High frequency sound spectra associated with the pavement hits, low frequency sound spectra associated with the rifle reports from the distance. In other words, the gunshot sounds from the distance. Now, why is there a difference in the frequency of the sound spectra between these two types of sounds? The answer can, has to do with the transmission of sound frequencies through the medium of air. And as this chart shows, Frequency versus sound transmission is an inverse relationship. So the lower your frequency, in other words, low, dull sounds have very high transmission over long distances because obviously they involve longer wavelengths. On the other hand, high frequency sounds, such as high pitched sounds or multiple harmonics of sounds, have very low transmission through air. Why is that? Because they involve very small wavelengths. Small wavelengths suffer what's called attenuation during transmission, which means they get silenced or, you know, sort of uh, muzzled or buffered or killed off or whatever you want to say. They get reduced uh, as it travels through the air. And this is why if you hear gunshots in the distance, they are, are always low thumping sounds. They're not high frequency sounds. In fact, soldiers throughout the Vietnam War and World War I and II and even modern warfare, they know that you can kind of gauge the distance of gunfire based on the frequency spectra that you're receiving in, in your ear. You can take a guess at how far that is away. It's not an accurate guess, and we're not relying on that, but I'm just pointing that out to you so you understand the physics. Now, I want you to listen to, uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you and play you some, some sounds here. So here's a combination of, of gunfire hitting the pavement. This is from the Las Vegas shooting. Here's the gunfire hitting the pavement, followed by the, uh, the, the rifle reports from the distance. Here's what that sounds like. Now I'm gonna play for you just the sound of rifle rounds hitting the pavement. I want you to notice the high frequency sounds in that sound. Here's, here's what that sounds like. Now I want you to hear what it sounds like the, the distant rifle reports arriving to your ear or to your recording device from a, a long ways away. Here's what that sounds like. Notice that it's a, it's a more low frequency sound. Now I'm gonna play for you a sequence that is indicated by this, where you have a rifle round striking the pavement followed by the low frequency sound effects afterwards. So give this a listen and then I'll point out something to you about the timing. So did you hear that? Did you hear the rifle rounds hitting the pavement followed by the rifle reports from a distant location? That's very important to recognize because what you can do is you can get the time code of those events. So you see this blue dot here? This is the time code of the last round of the rifle hitting the pavement. And then this is the time code of the last burst of the rifle report from the distance. You know, the low frequency sound. So again, rifle hitting the pavement here, this time code, 
rifle report from the distance, this other time code. Notice that the rifle report time code comes after the rifle hitting the payment, the, the bullets hitting the payment time code. What you do is you subtract this time code from that time code and you get a gap. I'm calling it the lag time. This lag time might be expressed in a, a fraction of a second. It might be 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, what have you. What's important to understand is that this lag time, because of the laws of physics and the speed of sound and the ballistics coefficient velocity of the bullet itself, this lag time tells you the distance of the shooter from your present location. Now, I'm going to say that again because it's crucial to understanding all of this. The lag time tells you the range of your shooter. If you know the lag time and you know the bullets, the rounds that they're shooting, then you can actually calculate the distance of your shooter. And I put together a little spreadsheet here. This was done just using Excel. I just copied it over here. Distance in yards, 100, 200, 300 yards. This is the lag time that you would hear if you look at the acoustic analysis of the audio file. And as you can see, if you hear a lag time of 0.597, that tells you your shooter is 600 yards away. If you have a lag time of 0.311, your shooter is 200 yards away. Now this table is only valid, of course, for 223 Remington. It's very specific to the cartridge. So you can't apply this table to everything, but if any of you out there in law enforcement, if you want this spreadsheet, I'll be happy to send you this Excel spreadsheet and you can modify it for other cartridges if you want. It's a, it's a very simple calculation. So again, the lag time tells you the range. Now why is that important? Here's, here's why it's important. Because the forensic acoustic analysis of the audio file shows that there are two shooters, not just one. Two shooters. Two shooters, yes, two shooters. The shooter number one is, has a lag time in the audio file of about 0.559 seconds, which of course is consistent. Well, look at the chart, 0.559 seconds. Where does that show up on the chart? 0.559 is between 400 and 500 yards, see? Here it is. It's about 450 or 425 yards, what have you. What is that? Oh, that's the distance of Mandalay Bay, isn't it? So we know we have one shooter at a distance of 425 to 450, maybe 475 yards at the high end. That's consistent with a shooter at Mandalay Bay. Now, of course, we can't tell the height, you know, what floor they're on from the acoustic analysis, but we can tell the range because of what I just showed you on the other side of this board. So we know, we have confirmation through this acoustic forensic analysis method that there is a shooter at 425 to 450 yards. But we also have another shooter that shows up in this acoustic analysis. This is the bombshell breaking news. Shooter number two appears throughout the audio files and shooter number two has a lag time of 0.374 seconds. 0.374 is on this chart, go back here, 0.374 is between here and here, so it's between 200 and 300 yards. So we have a second shooter at between 200 and 300 yards. That second shooter happens to be around 250 yards away from where these recordings are being recorded. Now what's interesting is that this is intermixed in with shooter number one. So you hear some, if, if you look at the audio file and you do a very detailed forensic analysis as I have done, Shooter number one, their rounds are there, but shooter number two, their rounds are also there mixed in. Now, you can't hear the difference just with your human ear. Why? Because the time differences are so slight. We're talking about 0.559 seconds versus 0.374 seconds. What is that difference, like 0.18 something? That is, that is not, like you can't hear 0.18 seconds difference just with the human ear. You have to take the waveforms and you have to plot them in software and you have to take the time signatures, the time codes, and do the math. And only then can you really tell the distance of the shooter. But that's what I did. And that's why this is called a forensic acoustic analysis because this is the method, this is how you determine it. And this is based on the laws of physics, the speed of sound in air, and the ballistics of the actual cartridge that was fired. So we know that shooter number one in the Mandalay Bay he doesn't have magical wizard powers. He can't make his bullets arrive more quickly to make them emulate 0.374 seconds, right? Would you agree with that, that Stephen Paddock, a 64-year-old retired accountant, isn't Gandalf? Like, he doesn't have magical powers, right? 
I hope you agree with me on that. So that means these, these rounds have to have been fired by someone else because the rounds from Stephen Paddock arrive 0.559 seconds later. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the report arrives 0.559 seconds after the rounds arrive, whereas this other shooter, the report arrives 0.374 seconds later. Now, what does this tell you about where the shooter, the second shooter is located? Uh, take a look at this map. This is a top-down map. This is Mandalay Bay. This is the concert venue, and that's the epicenter right there, kind of ground zero. And uh, this is the Luxor Hotel. This is the Roman Catholic Shrine, and so on. Now, this blue, I'm going to use these, these blue dots here, this, this margin, this dotted line sort of circumference here, this is a radius of 250 yards roughly away from ground zero. What it means is our second shooter has to be located in these blue dots in order for the laws of physics to hold true. Make sense? Now, if I were leading this investigation, I would look at what buildings and possible shooting locations intersect with this, this blue area that's 250 to 260, maybe 270 yards away. And if you do that, you come up with three very interesting answers. Number one, the rooftop of the AMPM convenience store on the north side of the venue, a shooter could be on that rooftop and could fire due south into the crowd from an elevated position. That's what this screenshot shows you from Google Maps. Second location, Oasis Apartments, the northwest corner building of Oasis Apartments located on the southeast side of the venue, could fire to the northwest also from an elevated position and hit the crowd. And that's what this this 3D view screenshot shows you. Third location, elevated dirt mound in the construction site located south of the concert venue with a very clear unobstructed view to the north from an elevated position. Now, I don't know if this is actually a big dirt mound still there. That's what Google Maps showed me. Maybe it's different now. Maybe there's been more construction there. But at least from what I saw on Google Maps, there was a, quite an elevated dirt mound there that could make an excellent shooting position from the prone position. So the qu first question I have for the FBI is, have you gone around to these buildings and have you looked for brass and have you looked for evidence that shots were fired from those positions? And if not, why not? I mean, I'm just a civilian. I'm just a guy, a scientist. Um, I put this together in about three hours using no taxpayer money on a Sunday afternoon just because I found it an intriguing little problem to solve. Um, why isn't the FBI using this to go look for the second shooter? Now, even better, the FBI can actually pinpoint the location of the second shooter using the following method. FBI can triangulate, and here's how they can do that. All they gotta do, I'll use these, all they gotta do is go out and find the location of every video that was shot, you know, that was recorded, find those locations, map them on here, and then use the acoustic analysis, get the lag times, compare that to this chart to get the distances of the shooter, draw circles at that radius. On the map here, you draw multiple circles around each uh, video that was taken, and then where those circles intersect, you know, wherever they intersect, like, like this, that's where your shooter is. And there'll be multiple intersections, but you can investigate those, or you might get patterns of overlaid intersections if you, if you map you know, 10 videos or 10 recordings. So the FBI can use this method and this method and this chart to identify almost exactly the location of the second shooter. Um, and I've just basically spelled it out. This is how you do it. This is forensic acoustic analysis. And of course, by the way, I've never had any formal training in forensic acoustic analysis, but it's just, it's just math and physics. It's, it's not rocket science here, folks. This is just like, it's like 10th grade you know, geometry. Uh, in any case, the FBI insists, no, there's only one shooter. There's a shooter only from this position at the Mandalay Bay. And he did all the shooting and he's the only guy. Don't, don't ask any more questions. Don't worry, there's, there's not a second shooter. That's the official story. Uh, YouTube is censoring videos that, that claim there might be a second shooter. You know, Facebook is censoring. Google's probably going to start censoring. The media is mocking anybody who says there's a second shooter. Well, that's because 
everyday mainstream media people are mathematically illiterate and firearms illiterate, and they don't understand any of this stuff. So they, they've never seen this analysis. So, you know, you can't trust their views on anything because they, don't, they have no clue what they're talking about. Most of them have never even shot a gun before. They don't even know that rifles expend brass. <laughs> Literally, they don't, they don't ask questions like, hey, where's all the missing brass in the hotel room? That thought never occurs to them because they don't even know that rifles eject brass. That's how illiterate they are in the media. Nevertheless, for the FBI to be correct, Stephen Paddock would have to be a magical man. And that's why I've listed this, the FBI, the magic gunman theory. Can you see that? Is that even on the screen? The magic gunman theory promoted by the FBI supposes that Stephen Paddock fires rounds from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay and then teleports himself, i.e. he's a mutant in the X-Men, to another location 250 yards away fires rifle rounds from that location, and then he teleports back to the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel, shoots himself in the head to be discovered by police. This is the FBI's theory. <laughs> you would talk about a, a lunatic conspiracy theory. That's the FBI's official story. It's nonsense, of course. In reality, because we don't believe in teleportation, right? You don't think there are actually X-Men out there who can teleport, do you? Uh, or, or Stephen Paddock, maybe he's got magic. Maybe he's Gandalf the Wizard and he can change the laws of physics and speed up his rifle report to catch up with the bullets that he fired. You think he can do that? Because for this number to be true, he would have to speed, he would have to increase the speed of sound or slow his bullets using, I don't know, matrix powers or whatever. That's nonsense. In truth, in reality, what is really going on is that there are two different shooters at two different locations. Shooter number one is here at Mandalay Bay, which is why there's a 0.559 second gap, lag, between the bullets hitting the pavement and the sound of his rifle. And there's a second shooter somewhere around here, in one of these buildings probably, in Oasis Apartments, or, or on the dirt mound, or on the roof of the AMPM. Or there's even a, an elevated billboard right here. Maybe he was up on the billboard uh, stand shooting from there, who knows. Maybe he was in the Roman Catholic shrine. Maybe he was in this empty parking lot over here. But he was within 250 to 275 yards. That shooter was shooting as well. And that shooter has now been erased from reality by the FBI and the mainstream media that wants you to believe the, the magic gunman theory, the magic lone gunman theory. So I offer this to the FBI uh, in a sense of goodwill, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a patriot. I don't want to see my fellow Americans gunned down. I want to catch this bad guy and the others who aided him just as much as you do. I mean, people in the crowd were reporting multiple shooters. The police radios were reporting multiple shooters. There are eyewitnesses. There's a woman that called the Michael Savage show and said, hey, there was, there was a, somebody on the ground that was moving toward us. You can hear that on michaelsavage.com. There's so many eyewit eyewitnesses who were reporting a second shooter that it would be insane to dismiss them all. I mean, I've heard explanations, oh, there's echoes, there's echoes. Well, guess what? This acoustic analysis eliminates just echoes. This is a timing issue. If you believe in the speed of sound and the laws of physics, you have to understand there's a second shooter within 250 to 275 yards away. So this is solid forensic acoustic evidence. And since, I mean, a lot of law enforcement organizations aren't familiar with how to do this, I'm willing to volunteer my time to help them understand this. I will, I will you know, I'll help the, deputy, the sheriff's office or the Las Vegas PD, or I'll, I'll even help the FBI in this case. Uh, I'll walk you through this. I'll teach you how to do this. I'll show you the, the waveforms in the software. I'll show you how to do this analysis if you're really seriously interested. But, you know, don't waste my time. If you're, if you're sitting there talking about, oh, there's just one lone gunman and he's a teleporter who can violate the laws of physics, then, you know, I'm not going to waste my time and walk you through this because you're not going to take it seriously. If you really want to catch the shooters, the multiple shooters, and get to the bottom of this, you got to first honor the laws of physics. You got to understand the math. You got to understand uh, bullet ballistics. You got to understand speed of sound. You got to take a closer look at the audio files. The signals are there. 
You know, it's not just noise. The signals are there. I can show you how to extract those signals out of that noise and get to this conclusion. So that's my goal. That's my aim. I want to catch this bad guy and those who are helping him uh, as much as you do. I want to catch the second shooter. You know, this guy's dead. What about shooter two? And was there a third shooter or a fourth shooter? We don't know. But I know for sure there is at least a second shooter. We need to find out who that is, right? It's the only way to honor those who, who, who were killed here, all the innocent people killed here. You're going to dishonor them and eliminate any possibility of a second shooter because of a political narrative being pushed by the FBI, that dishonors all the wounded and all the dead. We need to get to the bottom of this and we need to use good science to do this. And speaking of science, by the way, you know, I put this, this whole thing together in about, I think, three hours. Uh, this is not that difficult to put together. If I had the resources of an FBI investigations team, I could pinpoint where that shooter is coming from. The FBI has the resources to do this. I mean, I'm just one guy. I got this far by myself on a Sunday afternoon. The FBI could take this the rest of the way and they could nail the actual location of the second shooter if they had the political willingness to do that. So that's my analysis. I offer this in the interest of helping to catch the actual perpetrators of this heinous crime. We want to get to the bottom of this. We want America to be safe again. We want to be able to attend concerts without being shot at. And so we need to look at all the data, as I have done here, and not just dismiss whatever you don't like because you're the FBI and you have a, a political narrative to pursue. That just that doesn't fly in America anymore. Sorry, folks, doesn't fly. You know, we citizens, the independent scientists, independent media publishers, uh, uh, you know, firearms enthusiasts on our own, you know, we're not stupid people. We can figure this stuff out. We understand ballistics, we understand math, we can, we can do acoustic analysis, we can look at maps, we can pull all this together, we can do the work of like an entire investigations team in Washington, which is usually highly inefficient, wastes a lot of time and money, but we can do this very quickly because you know, we're citizens who really are compassionate about this and we wanna use our knowledge and our uh, good science to get to the bottom of this. So that's what this is all about. Uh, you can help me in this, share this video, get it out to as many people as possible, analyze this. Are there other shooting positions that I missed here? There might be. What else is 250 to 275 yards away from ground zero? You tell me. You might find something that I missed. Is there any evidence of bullets going in a different direction? If he was shooting from the Oasis Apartments, bullets would have been shooting to the northwest that would have lodged certain bullets in property on the northeast corner of the Luxor. So you, should, you would want to look there and see if you could find bullets. Bullets, not brass, but bullets, expended bullets stuck in things on that corner. That would tell you that a shooter was here at the Oasis Apartments, wouldn't it? So you just got to follow the laws of physics. What about, is, are there bullets found on this construction site here or some of the buildings at this location? because that would tell you that the shooter might have been shooting from the roof of the AMPM convenience store, right? So just follow this. I mean, do the math, use logic, use physics. We can get to the bottom of this if we work together. We, the independent media, are the only ones asking real questions about this at this point. The mainstream media, you know, not only are they illiterate when it comes to math and physics and firearms, they, they're, they're ordered what to say every day. They don't, uh, they don't do any actual journalism anymore. They're not investigative journalists. Uh, they're, they're puppets and prostitutes for the official narrative. And that official narrative is, a, is an absolute lie. So help us conduct this investigation, you know, and check out naturalnews.com and check out uh, shootings.news. Uh, some of the other great websites out there covering this are uh, Gateway Pundit, uh, SGT Report, you know, uh, The Daily Sheeple and, and others. A lot of people covering this. So. Support the independent media, support our analysis, share this video everywhere, and add to it. Let's see what we can find out. Let's see if we can, if we can uh, bust apart the fake narrative of the FBI or maybe help uh, law enforcement find more evidence that they can follow up as leads and get to the actual shooting team that was responsible for this heinous crime. That's all I ask. That's all I want is to get to the bottom of this. But thank you for watching. Mike Adams here, the Health Ranger, editor of naturalnews.com, as well as publisher of Shootings 
www.thepeopleshour.news. I thank you for your attention. Hope this all makes sense. Take care.